Welcome to another episode of Code for Thought. So how do you feel about hosting a podcast episode yourself on Code for Thought? I'm asking because this podcast has grown quite a bit since the first episode went live in January 2021, three years ago as the time of recording. And there's a hell of a lot more content to be produced and shared, so much so in fact, that it's going to be difficult to do that single-handedly in future even though I am doing it full-time now. There's just too much cool stuff out there and too many fascinating people to talk to, which is a great problem to have in a way. And besides, this podcast was always intended to be for and by the community of research software engineers and of all those busy researchers of you who also write code. You wouldn't be the first co-host either. Perhaps some of you may remember Jacqueline Laird, Jacqueline, at the time working for the Software Sustainability Institute, created a bunch of episodes and introduced us to fellows of the Software Sustainability Institute. Or take Selena Aragon, who had the great and fantastic idea of hosting episodes about software horror stories. In fact, I met up with Selena recently and talked to her about her experiences in co-hosting. She admits that hosting an episode can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's also a great lot of fun, as I'm sure you will hear in this short audio clip. Hi, Selena. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. And thank you for co-hosting the Software Horror Stories. I think the whole idea came from one of the collaboration workshop ideas of Colleen Sozzi and um, I think Patricia Hartrick as well and a few others uh, that came up with this coding confessions idea. And the whole thing is to try and normalize mistakes in, in academia and in research software. Mm. And I thought it was a nice idea to try and capture some stories and try to help them transmit that message. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in terms of hosting those specific episodes, it was a lot of fun because obviously you get to talk to people. Mm before recording the episode and kind of discuss a little bit of what their experience has been and discuss which example because there, there were often many examples <laughs> which example yeah. would be the best to to record and to and to present to our audience so how was it for you then co-hosting was it a little bit intimidating or yeah it was definitely intimidating at first <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i've never done anything like that before and I don't necessarily have a, an extrovert personality either, mm. but I found that it was really good once you get past that first kind of intimidating stage of pressing the record button and start having a conversation. And then really it's just having a conversation and trying to have fun. And what I really enjoyed was the ability to speak to many people about different things that they do. And that has been a, an enriching experience and I am going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can come back. But if you <laughs> were to give any advice to other people, what would you say? What, what are the kind of tips you'd give? I would say it's very important to prepare and to think about the questions carefully that you want to ask your hosts. You have to allow for a little bit of kind of ad hoc conversation to happen and follow the flow but mm. having some prepared questions can be very helpful especially to overcome that kind of first intimidating stage the other thing i would say is to have like a little icebreaker with the person that you're interviewing in the first few minutes that when you're not recording because yeah it, it can be quite hard to get into a conversation kind of straight off especially one that you know is going to be recorded so <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea to help them kind of get their tongue going <laughs> <laughs> and ours exactly <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not an extrovert person so how do you jump the turtle then well i think you just have to make it something that you've set with a person to record an, an episode so what i did was set a date and just do it <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that set a deadline <laughs> you know, that might be also a personality aspect but <laughs> I do think that I find that easy, you know, kind of if I say I'm going to do something, then I have to do it and there's no way around it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Selena. Well, I hope you'll be back. Yeah, I'm sure that people want to hear more about software horror stories. I'm sure there are plenty of them around. There's definitely plenty and I hope I can come back when I have a little bit more time.
Well, I certainly hope Selina will give us a few more of her favorite softer horror stories in future. And perhaps you have your own stories you would like to share, or a subject or a topic that really interests you. You wouldn't be doing this by yourself, by the way, and you get the help you need to get you going. I mean, after all, I do appreciate that it takes time out of your busy life. It is a little bit of effort, but at the same time, I find it extremely rewarding. So if you want to share your ideas about an episode, or you want to host an episode, or perhaps more than one, I'd like to hear from you. You can get in touch with me via email on code for thought, that's code number four thought in one word, at proton.me. Other ways to reach me are the RSE Slack channels for the UK and the US, or my account on Mastodon. You'll find all the contact details in the episode notes. So, let's get your creative juices flowing and get in touch. Oh, time's up. See you next time. But before I forget, this podcast is covered by the Creative Commons license. See ya.